If theism is true, we have a sound foundation for morality. Goodness without God is good enough. Indeed, for many individuals, it is better. Given the finality of death, it really does not matter how you live. I'm shocked that you are so anti-human. You're anti-human. But of course, uh, it's atheism that is anti-human because it is atheism which reduces human beings to just another animal species on this planet. Our debaters tonight will speak to the following resolution. Resolved. Goodness without God is good enough. Arguing in the affirmative is Dr. Paul Kurtz, Chairman of the Council for Secular Humanism and Professor of Philosophy Emeritus at SUNY Buffalo. Dr. Kurtz is the editor of Free Inquiry magazine and author, contributor, and editor of 30 books and over 700 essays. He has served as a fellow of the, with the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and he is a recipient of both the John Dewey Fellowship and the Bertrand Russell Society Award. Dr. Kurtz received his BA from New York University and his PhD from Columbia University. His most recent book, The Courage to Become, was published by Prager Greenwood Press in 1997. Welcome, Dr. Kurtz. Arguing the negative is Dr. William Lane Craig, research professor of philosophy at the Talbot School of Theology. Professor Craig is also a prodigious author of books, essays, and critical reviews. This year alone, he published two books, Time and the Metaphysics of Reality and Time and Eternity, exploring God's relationship to time. Dr. Craig received his bachelor's degree from Wheaton College with high honors. He obtained two master's degrees, summa cum laude, from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. He has a doctorate of philosophy from the University of Birmingham, England, and a doctorate of theology from the University of Munich. And Dr. Craig, we welcome you as well. Each debater will make a 15-minute opening statement and they will follow up with eight-minute responses. Each then will be allowed a rebuttal of five minutes. Thus, we will have opening statements, responses, and rebuttals. After that, we will take questions from the audience that will be posed alternatively to each debater. The person answering will have two minutes to respond, and the other person will be allowed a one-minute response. Our two academic deans on my left Dr. Joseph Volker and Dr. Fred L. Owens, on stage behind me, will screen the submitted questions. There are index cards on your seats. Please, as you listen to the debate, write your questions on your cards, and at an appropriate time, we will have ushers come and pick the cards. Following the question period, Dr. Kurtz and Dr. Craig will offer five-minute closing statements. Therefore, Dr. Kurtz, we call upon you to make an affirmative statement. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here under the auspices of the Bonchek Institute for Thought and Rational Inquiry, two commodities that are very rare in our society today. The topic is goodness without God is good enough. Indeed, for many individuals, it is better. A person can be moral without a belief in God. Belief in God is not sufficient to guarantee morality. It does not depend on the commandments from someone on high, but on the development of an internal moral sense, the development of moral character, particularly in the young, the growth of the capacity for moral reasoning. 
Now, millions of Americans do not accept a belief in a personal God. They do not practice a religion, or they may only be nominal members of a particular denomination. They may be agnostics, skeptics, secular humanists, atheists, or just plain backsliders. But they do not, but they do believe very deeply in morality. Today, uh, they are the last repressed minority in America. They need to come out of the closet and be appreciated, for they have much to offer to this country. They too are patriots. God and patriotism are not synonymous. Unbelievers trace their lineage back through the history of thought, from Greece and Rome, through the Renaissance, modern science, the Enlightenment, the democratic revolutions of our time, and they've been involved in those great movements. They represent many of the heroes and heroines of human civilization. Many of them are precursors of modern secular humanism. Socrates, Epicurus, Hume, Kant, Darwin, Freud, the founders of this great republic, Madison, Franklin, Jefferson and Paine, deists but not theists, and in the modern world, John Dewey, Bertrand Russell, Madame Curie, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Margaret Sanger, Mark Twain, yes, Mark Twain, Robert Ingersoll, Thomas Edison, Francis Crick, Isaac Asimov, Carl Sagan, the list is very long indeed. Many of these individuals have led exemplary lives of nobility and excellence, and they've contributed to the social good. They were kind, or are kind, considerate, altruistic, caring, interested in improving the human condition. They have a deep sense of responsibility and goodwill. They lived creative lives as scientists, poets, artists, ordinary men and women in our midst. They, can, they have been able to uh, exercise self-discipline, self-respect, they're well-motivated, they are self-actualizers. Indeed, today it may be a surprise to people here that 60% of American scientists are unbelievers, according to a recent poll. 93% of the National Academy of Sciences and many Nobel Prize winners 39% of Americans are unchurched. Now, all of this is drowned out today by the propagandists for religion who maintain that a person cannot be moral unless he or she believes in a personal God. And if you look at the fruits of modern society, of our democracy, of science and technology, and all of the goods that have accrued from these free thinkers, and unbelievers who believe deeply in aiding humanity, the tale is very impressive indeed. And the best illustration is modern medical science, which has improved the human condition, improved health, reduced suffering and pain, and uh, uh, led to happiness. America is an anomaly. When you travel around the world, as I do, and you see American contrast, we are in, indeed truly religious, I agree. But in contrast with Europe, for example, and many of the other democracies, this is startling. According to a recent poll at the University of Michigan, 31.7% of people in Great Britain do not believe in God. 41.7% in Norway. 48% in France. 53% in Sweden. 57% in Japan. And indeed, in many of these countries of the world, less than 10% of the population attend religious prayer meetings or are active in their churches, synagogues, mosques, or temples. 